Okay. Good morning, class. In this video, we shall study about the harmful microorganisms. Now we move from helpful microorganisms to the harmful microorganisms, that is, disease-causing microorganisms. Harmful microorganisms, why do we call them harmful microorganisms? Because they cause diseases. They cause diseases in humans and plants and animals as well. Now microbes that cause diseases are called as pathogens, meaning disease-causing microorganisms are called as pathogens. It is a very important term. Please do not get confused. And there are four groups of microorganisms that cause diseases in humans. First is the bacteria, virus, fungi, and protozoa. I have told you earlier that viruses are the real disease-causing agents, whereas some of the bacteria are useful, and even fungi and protozoa. Okay. Now, these four groups of microorganisms cause diseases and therefore we call them as pathogens or disease-causing agents. <clears throat> Let us move on. Now, I have given you some of the examples or the names of the diseases to rouse your interest, students. The first one is the diseases caused by the bacteria. Let us see them. Diarrhea, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, TB, that is tuberculosis, typhoid, cholera, and leprosy. And the second group is the diseases caused by the viruses. We have smallpox, you know about it, common cold, which you get once or twice in a year, and measles, which the newborn babies or the children get, influenza, rabies, which you get when a mad dog bites you. Hepatitis, there are three types of hepatitis, A, B, and C. And dengue, whichever way you want to say, dengue or dengue, the AIDS, SARS, Ebola, and COVID-19. Ebola caused by Ebola virus and COVID-19 caused by coronavirus. Third group, diseases caused by protozoa. We have dysentery, Kalazar. Kalazar is also called fever and malaria, which you know very well about it. And the fourth group is the diseases caused by the fungi. We have eczema, ringworm, and athlete's foot. Now let us see some of the pictures so that it, our learning becomes interesting. But before that, let me clear it up for you. There you are. So here we see measles our beautiful baby is suffering from measles here and this boy a young boy that you see here is suffering from kalaza or we can call it as a black fever and we see here diphtheria a young lady suffering from diphtheria and this is our leprosy disease Leprosy disease uh, deforms your toes, fingers, and uh, other organs of your body. It's really very dangerous. And here we have some of the skin diseases. Eczema here. A man in his arm having eczema. And we have ringworm here. Ringworm caused by fungus. And we have athlete's foot here. A man having athlete's foot. Students do not get frightened when you look at these pictures. I am showing you these pictures so that our learning becomes interesting and science uh, is really a difficult subject for many of you so that it becomes interesting and enjoying. Okay, let us move on. Now we we'll discuss the common human diseases caused by the microorganisms. And we'll see them one by one, viruses, bacteria, and protozoa, whatever. So let us see the first group first, bacterial diseases, that is the diseases caused by the bacteria. And here in this column, I have given you the names of the diseases. And here we have the names of the microorganisms, actual scientific names of the microorganisms. 
and the mode of transmission here and then prevented preventive measures all these things are given in your textbook so i'm as i'm explaining to you here and when you look at your textbook you'll understand more first one is tuberculosis tb it's caused by bacteria called mycobacterium and the mode of transmission is air how do we prevent this disease vaccination and isolation isolation means keeping aloof the student uh, the patients keeping him away and not touching his objects the second one is cholera cholera caused by vibria cholerae and it is spread through food and water and the preventive measures we have vaccination and hygiene clean hygiene practices in food and water third one is typhoid is caused by salmonella typhi and the mode of transmission is water unclean water and the preventive measures vaccination and clean water we should always drink boiled water so these are three diseases that are caused by bacteria and we have the preventive measures for them the next group is the viral diseases diseases caused by the viruses and here we have the names of the diseases we have the names of the viruses and the mode of transmission and preventive measures here first one chicken pox causative organism chicken pox virus also called as varicella and the mode of translation transmission is air and contact uh, coming in contact with the patient and the mode of trans uh, mode sort of I'm sorry preventive measures that is uh, vaccination and isolation and the next one is poliomyelitis in short you say polio uh, it's caused by polio virus in short we write pv mode of transmission air and water and the preventive measures vaccination third one measles caused by measles virus in short we write mv mode of transmission water and preventive measures vaccination and isolation hepatitis b caused by hepatitis b virus hepatitis b virus in short we write as bv mode of transmission is water unclean water and the preventive measures vaccination and clean water you must always drink clean and boiled water and we have dengue here caused by dengue fever in short we write dnv and the mode of transmission are the mosquitoes and the preventive measures we have clear stagnated water around your house or around your dwellings and then you must always use mosquito nets when you sleep or you must use the mosquito sites i have used this term mosquito sites you won't find this word in the dictionary mosquito sites or mosquito sites you can say they are available plenty of them in the market let us see the last one last disease that is the malaria it is caused by protozoa it is caused by protozoa and the name of the protozoa is plasmodium there are two types of plasmodium causing malaria first one is plasmodium vivax and the second is plasmodium falciparum you need not remember the full name just remember it plasmodium is enough and this is also transmitted by the mosquitoes and therefore we have the same preventive measures here same preventive measures all right okay now do not get confused here there are two diseases caused by the bites of the mosquitoes here and then here the in case of malaria the causative organism is a protozoa in, co in in case of dengue the causative organism is a virus and therefore don't get confused okay